Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome or welcome back to the Granaic Creations podcast channel. This is episode 86. My name is Kirsty, my pronouns are they, them and I am coming to you from Paisley in Scotland. So, how is everybody? Um, if you've watched my last podcast you know that Scott was positive with the Rona and um, unfortunately I did end up catching it <laughs> and uh, we're both I'd say at like 98% back to normal we both still do have a bit of a lingering cough and some other annoying symptoms but we are mostly back to good as new and um it was I was I was scared, I'm not gonna lie. I've had two years of people basically being like, if you catch this you will die because of my health condition, because of the medications that I'm on. Um and when Scott tested positive, I was just I just went into like care mode, like and taking care of him and staying on top of the washing and the dishes and stuff and I was just like, right there's literally a 50% chance that I will catch this. And he test, when did he test positive? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was like Thursday, like late, 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 so, excuse me, late, late, late Thursday into Friday morning, he tested positive and then I started getting sick on, uh, very late Monday into Tuesday and then I tested positive on Wednesday. So yeah, it's been interesting. <laughs> but like I say, we are both feeling a lot better. We are just dealing with like a lingering cough and that's really, um, it's quite annoying, but obviously it's, it's not horrific. So yeah. Um, and because of that, I did go a little bit shopping crazy to try and cheer myself up. That is my mum. Um, she's just texting me, so, hi mum. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just get that off the top of the podcast. So there isn't a lot to show off this week, like not a lot of progress because uh, I wasn't physically able to really craft like I was really really tired the fatigue was completely real when it comes to um when you test positive and I suffer from fatigue anyway so I haven't had a ton of energy to do stuff but I still have some stuff I would like to show off and share so no finished objects not a single one and I've just realized I left one thing on my desk but I've hardly worked on it so it's fine I'm not gonna go up and get it so I've got absolutely no finished objects this week. I have three works in progress, technically f five, but two I'm not going to show off because I've hardly done any work on them. Um, and then I've got some purchases. So this should be a relatively short podcast, but we will see. We know what I'm like. I will find a way to blather for the sake of blathering. <clears throat> okay, so first one's first. I finished my giant knot ball, magic knot ball, um, on my crochet granny stripe blanket. It's not too many extra rows. I got five rows on this time, so not exactly a ton compared to the last time I showed you. But the magic knot ball, the first one is finished. Um, I do need to go through, um, I have a second one of these units and it's over by the window and it's got most of my little mini opal balls in them but we had a bit of an accident a couple of weeks ago where I don't really even know how it happened, I think Scott was trying to close the curtain and it accidentally knocked something off a shelf and I, I've i had my minis in this giant glass vase for years now and something got knocked off the unit and fell onto the glass and the glass shattered and I just haven't had 
the physical energy to handle it and deal with it. Like this has been weeks, like if not a month this has been broken. And unfortunately a lot of the yarn has tiny little shards of glass in it. Which is another reason why I just haven't had the mental energy to deal with it. Because you really need to be careful with tiny little bits of glass. Like big bits of glass you can carefully pick up and dispose of. Tiny little bits of glass, a lot more tricky. So I have two balls of opal yarn completely away from the chance of having glass on them. Every other ball that I have of the mini opals could possibly have lots of little bits of glass on them. So I haven't dealt with that yet. Like I'm looking at it now and I'm like that pro I probably should deal with that this weekend if I'm honest. Um, and I also now need to find a replacement vase. <laughs> I'm also going to do a switcheroo and kind of because there's nothing in this top layer like this um, wooden bit it's just so that I can put like my laptop and my uh, yarn scraps on there for easy access so I think I'm going to do some sort of switcheroo and move the yarn scraps away from there if I get another glass vase uh, because I don't want a repeat accident to happen so yeah, looking at that, I'm like, yep, I really got to deal with that because it is quite dangerous there. Like, a half broken vase is still sitting there. And I know for a fact there's still lots of, bit, lots of little bits of glass that I need to clean up. So yeah, I guess that'll be today's task after I finish recording. But I'm really, really happy with the progress on this. It still brings me a lot of joy. Um, this is it sitting on the floor. Um, so again, last time I showed you it was just probably a bit under my bust. I only got about five rows put on it this time so not much progress. But I am really excited uh, about this project and I can't wait till it's finished. Probably might start another blanket project or I'll just put a lot of effort into my uh, Cozy Memories blanket which has had no love on it. Not a single stitch has been put on that. Um, at all in the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to throw this over and then put that there too. <sighs> Gotta have a good cup of tea. Makes everything better. Right. My next project has been receiving a lot of love. I don't know where this has come from. No, I do know where this has come from. I have been trying really hard to work on my boring sweater, but I am knitting it at far too tight a gauge for my hands. I love the gauge. It's the correct gauge for the pattern as well, but my hands hate it, really, really hate it it's very painful for me to knit one. I can get about a row done and then my hand, not even a row to be honest, I can get a couple of stitches done and then my hands are like, please for the love of anything, stop. <laughs> so I do unfortunately have to put it down. And that's a real bummer for me because I really want to make more garments for myself. I really, struggle or well, I don't want to buy fast fashion to begin with I really really don't want to I have enough yarn and some of it in sweaters quantities so I may as well just make my own slow fashion all the way and I hate shopping at the best of times so if I was going to go down the fast fashion route I hate shopping I just I don't like it everything is very very girly and feminine and nothing really in my styles and my colours like I like bright colours I like different and it's just not a fun process for me and also I might not be the biggest person in the world but I am still a big person I am still plus size or fat whichever words you want to choose 
And so I am really enjoying the idea of making my own and wearing them. Like I'm really, really loving wearing uh, my Love Note sweater. Um, this is my second one that I've made. It is a short sleeve one and it really, it works well if you wear like a long sleeve or in summer. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, so yeah, like, um, I am sad that I can't knit on my boring sweater and at the same point I am in no way going to force myself to work on it because I know I'll just damage my hands more. So couldn't work on my boring sweater but really wanted to work on a garment. Cue the Summer Court Tank. My printer has printed this out very weird. The colours aren't quite what they should be. I think I was running out of ink. But this is the Summer Court Tank by Dragon Horde Designs, which is Kristen. Tristan, sorry, Tristan. Um, and I've had this pattern for quite a while. And I just decided that I needed a project and I needed to not have to wind up yarn. That was a big thing as well. And if you remember, at the start of 2021, I bagged up a lot of projects and the yarn. Some of them, excuse me, itchy nose. Some of them, the yarn was already wound or I had wound it up. And one of those projects was this one with, um, this is a very smooshed up ball band, so apologies. One of them was Chromatic Yarns in the Flail Snail colourway. It is in the Sturdy Sock Base, which is 75% Superwash Blueface Leicester, 25% nylon, and there is approximately 425 metres in a 100 gram hank. So Chromatic Yarns, if you're not aware, is the corner of craft, and that is by Hannah. Hannah is absolutely a wonderful human being. I met her in person at EYF and she was just brilliant. She is such a lovely human being. And I knit this up, I want to say in the West Knits parachute And there was just something about the project uh, a, a stage in the pattern I just I wasn't grasping couldn't figure it out and whatever I was doing as a workaround just looked nasty and so ripped it all out and I've had the balls wound up for two years two and a half years maybe more and I decided that they would look fantastic in this project put them in a bag put the pattern in the bag with the yarn, everything, and the day came that it finally got cast on. So, first of all, I am doing this with helical knitting. So I am working with both balls of yarn at the same time. One is a cake, one is a ball, but it is exactly the same yarn and I am working um, interchangeably between the two for helical knitting or jogless join, I think it's also called. And this is my progress. It looks a bit crazy on camera, like so many different colours and everything, but in person it just looks really good. So this is the garter stitch section. There is a lace section down here which is rolling, like the, the yarn. The knitted piece is rolling on up on itself. So, did I swatch? Heck no. Do I regret not swatching? Little bit. <laughs> so this calls for two needle sizes, a 2.75 and a 3.75. And you cast on with the larger needle size and work that for the whole body and then the straps are done in the smaller needle size. 
And so I did. I cast on with the larger needles. Didn't light the gauge. Too loose in my opinion. Um, and I had... I don't understand how gauge works. My brain physically can't work it out. If you have too many stitches, is your gauge... I don't know. Gauge in my head with my um, dyslexia and everything, I can't figure it out. Please don't try and teach me. I've tried. It took me 30 years to figure out the difference between there, there and there when it comes to spelling and I still get it wrong. So don't at me, don't send me links or anything, please accept the fact I don't understand um, and I try and figure it out sometimes. But I started with a 3.75 and I done two repeats of the pattern with that one. And then I went down for one repeat with a 3.5 and I still wasn't happy. I then finished the last repeat of the lace pattern on a 3.25 and I just wasn't quite happy. So then I've knit the garter stitch section in a three. And I'm extremely happy with it. But I am concerned it now won't fit me. <laughs> because I've gotten down so many needle sizes. And that's on me. That is in no way on the pattern or the designer or anything like that. That is 100% on me. That is my error. Um, I'm hoping it's kind of like my ranunculus situation all over again where it looks small because I can't really stretch it out on the needles and that it is going to fit me just fine. And my plus point to having gone through so many different needle sizes is that it's going to flare at the bottom which is going to go over my tummy really nicely. So, silver lining and all that from getting all the wrong needle sizes is that it will flare out at the bottom because the gauge and the stitch sizes have got bigger. Therefore, covering my tummy. See? All good. There was method in my madness all along. Apparently. <clears throat> pattern calls for you to knit 5.5 inches minimum from the lace section. I think yesterday when I measured it I was 4.5 away. Maybe 4. So from roughly where, yeah, from where my finger ends to up to here. I think it was 4 or 4.5 inches and I don't really want to stretch this lengthwise too much and I'm just not happy with that length so I know I still have an inch to go but even if I knit that inch I'm still not happy with that length I want it longer and I have the ability to do so without fearing of running out of yarn so I the yarn is approximately 425 meters so that means I've got 850 meters to work with and for the size I cast on it only needed 770 da -dum -dum -da. oh wow nearly spot on 773 meters for the size that I cast on um, yeah, I'm doing the plunging v-neck option, which is 773 meters for size 6. Or you can do the regular v-neck option, and for size 6 that would be 800 meters. So even if I was to do the standard v-neck, I still have 50 meters that I can play with. And so I'm going to knit till 6.57 inches and then I'm going to put in two lifelines a row apart and I'm going to do that just in case I decide once I've done the bust section and the straps and possibly raise the back that not quite long enough I can 
just do a little bit of a uh, sweater surgery or top surgery in this case because it's definitely not a sweater and extend it without having to rip the front and I think back I think you knit more in the back haven't actually read that far in the pattern so I'm really really happy with it the part the color looks a bit crazy on the screen for my camera but I'm really really happy with this color knitting up because I'm doing helico knitting there is no pulling which is fantastic I'm not opposed to pulling but I think if I knit this just one ball at a time this could pull up really really interestingly whereas I wanted all the colours to merge and kind of be like um like an artist's palette after a big painting session does that make sense like if you picture an artist's palette uh so yeah really really pleased with the progress on this one because it's just straight garter stocking it I think I've been saying the whole thing wrong this entire time I get stocking it and garter confused all the time this is stocking it it is isn't it <laughs> um so yeah I'm really 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 pleased with this one and I can just sit in it and watch something on the tv or watch a podcast or even just if I'm sitting talking to Scott and not feel like I'm going to mess up. Unlike some other projects or even when I was working the lace. The lace was so easy to mesmer like memorise. Like so, so easy. And for me it was 22 repeats. <clears throat> 20 repeats. I had 20 repeats of the lace which gives you a lot of time to get memorised and and then because it repeats four times it's just it's just so easy it's so potato chippy as other people seem to call it but it's gonna be really really nice and I hope to get it done soon I hope the good weather and the warmth kicks in soon because it's been cold uh, but yeah I'm really happy with this one that one over there as well. Good thing about having a couch to my side. I'm going to pause and cough. Sorry about that but needs must. Okay so I decided against everyone's comments, thank you very much for your input, that I was going to rip out my underwing mitt. So if you remember, I had probably just over a year ago, because I didn't touch it for the longest time when we moved in here, and we've been in here a year now. Maybe it was a uh, 2020 I cast this on. Anyway. I cast on the underwing mitts a while ago and I was buzzing through it, absolutely flying and then I put it down for a while and when I picked it back up I just wasn't as careful with my gauge as I should have been and you could physically see where my gauge had changed because it kind of went like that, like my nice loose colour work gauge and then it just went in real, real hard. And it looked horrible, in my opinion. But it fitted fine. So aesthetically, it was bugging me. But it fitted fine. And it wasn't like the colour work was puckering or anything like that. It honestly, it just looked bad, in my opinion. And it really was annoying me. So a lot of people were saying, if it fits fine, you're fine. Don't rip it out. Just cast on for the next one. Well, I ripped it back, didn't I? I'm really happy with how it is now. So I ripped this back all the way down to here. And I ripped a lot further than I needed to. Uh, where I changed my gauge was more about here. 
about the first wing and I ripped it back a lot further than I meant to because of the way this yarn was really sticking together. This is such a great yarn for colour work because it is 100% Peruvian wool. Do I have the ball bands? Yes I do. So this is Knit Picks palette which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. 231 yards and 50 grams and I'm doing it in the ash and cream colourways. So this is a fingering weight yarn and it's really nice like it's not toothy like I, I don't think it would irritate a person but everyone's preferences and um, comfort levels are different so I ripped it back whilst I was sick and had some energy to knit uh, and wasn't napping <laughs> and I'm really really happy that I did. So Chubby Pug Yarns commented in one of my previous posts I think about the underwing mitten and recommended Ladderback Jacquard for colour work. And I took a note of that and I was very, very curious because I don't think I'd heard of it before. And I wasn't overly happy with my stranded colour work on the moth itself. My colour work really just in this whole section here, I was not overly happy with. I was happy with it, all, all of this, and I was happy with it here. All because the floats are a lot shorter and smaller and so you don't have to really carry a float. And so I done some research on ladder, la ladder back jacquard, hope I'm saying that right, and I found a good tutorial, if I find it again it's in my history somewhere, I've yet to weave in ends and I've had to join yarn during this. Uh, so if I find the tutorial that I used, I'll post it. But I also just seen that my friend Zoe of You So You has posted literally, possibly even just today, a tutorial for Ladder Back Card. So I will post to her as well and you can check both of them out. So this is the inside. And you can see it a lot more clearer with the cream yarn the ladders as I'm assuming. I don't know much about it, I don't understand. I'm calling them ladders if that's not correct. There is two links to two different tutorials in the description box down below where they will hopefully explain it a lot better than me. But I am really glad that Chubby Pug Yarns came into my comments and left this because I am over the moon with how this looks on the correct side. But I just think it also looks really interesting on the reverse side. The only thing I would like to note when it comes to this is you have to be very careful when you're in your setup row that you do it nice and loose, otherwise it does pucker your yarn, your project. And I have sometimes just sat and kind of wiggled it to loosen up because there is a little bit of puckering. Not enough that I would rip it out again, but enough to make me think, right, okay, when I do the second one, I have to be a lot looser. But when I wiggle it, it does seem to really kind of help even out those stitches. And in the, the tutorial that I watched, they did say, like, the more you use it, the stitches will even themselves out and they will shift a wee bit. Um, and they also say that blocking works wonders and because I haven't finished it, the thumb isn't finished, I haven't blocked it. So yeah, I'm really really glad that I ripped that back now and I have started the second one, like literally just the cuff. I was about to start the colour work and um, forgot that I was using my Haya Haya Sharps and I uh, stabbed my finger multiple times in the exact same spot and uh, that hurt like a, like a, 
it hurt. <laughs> I'm not opposed to swearing on my podcast because I swear in real life, but yeah, it hurt a lot. There was blood. It was very painful to knit for a few days. I done it on both my first finger and my thumb. It hurt. But yeah, I'm really, really glad that I ripped it back because I've now tried that new technique. I'm really, really happy with that technique as well. Sorry, I'm just realising how sore my back is, so I'm trying to like shift how I sit. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for that recommendation, for coming into the comments and letting me know about that, because I would never have known. I'd have just probably seen Zoe's like episode and then figured it out all this time later. If I had even seen her post, but I'm really glad I did see her post, but it should have cut, it should should have come up in my subscription feed on YouTube. I'll need to check that. Um, sorry, I'm just checking what else is to my side. But yeah, really, really glad that I ripped it back. And now I think my fingers are fully healed. I should be able to pick that back up and just be very careful not to stab myself or try and find less sharp needles. That would be equally good an, an option. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So one last project and then on to some things that I've purchased. I forgot to show on the last podcast that I have made some, some, not very much, progress on my cross stitch. Now you can see a stain, an arch stain from the hoop. I'm hoping that will come out. But this is the cross stitch I picked up in 2018, 2019. I think it's 2019 when I had my shoulder surgery. And every now and again I seem to pick it up and then I end up putting it back down. So I was uh, having a really, really rough time with my, both my shoulders actually, and I decided to pick this back up and I thought I had got a lot done. Looking at it, it doesn't look like it, but I spent like a good couple of days just working on this solidly and it also doesn't help that you just can't really see what I've done. So I, up here, so above the branch, there's a ton of stitches. Then there's a bunch here under the branch and then more here. So I'm just doing a lot of like the fill in work and there's still some in the face that I have to finish. And then there's a bunch for under here and then I need to do the wording which says hang in there. And then I've got to do the outline and the back stitching. What is going on with some of these stitches? I don't know. But this was my first cross stitch. Like, big piece. This is tiny compared to some of the ones that, like, Deborah and Tracy are doing. Um, and I was definitely learning as I go because I've carried carried my uh, thread very far in some <laughs> some instances that could make somebody very upset if they saw this as a avid cross stitcher but yeah I think it's good for my first try there was there's definitely things I would do differently um but at the same point for a first one when you don't actually know what you're doing pretty good <laughs> I'm pretty modest if you hadn't noticed so yeah, I think it's really cute. I've always loved this wee one. But yeah, I think I'm going to try and get the face finished. And then I kind of want to just get the outlines done, like all the back stitching and stuff. Because then it will really help the, the little paws pop out. Like They look really like they're blending in because it's such a light fabric on the background. 
So I think by doing all the back stitching, it's really going to help this pop. So yeah, I think I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try and do that. Get the face finished and do the back stitching. And then I can work on the last wee bit. But yeah. So I just forgot to show that last time. I haven't worked on it in the last two weeks, but I had worked on it before. <sighs> and you've hardly talked in the last two weeks because you've been sick and then you sit down and do a podcast where you're primarily the only person doing the talk. Primarily? No, you are the only person doing the talking. It makes you feel like a little bit winded. So, apologies. Okay. Things I've purchased. Okay, I'm actually the first one I didn't buy. It was a gift from Scott. And um, <clears throat> I had mentioned this to him back in September last year at Perth Festival of Yarn at Katie O'Seely McWheelie's stall because she stalks Chalgu. And I said to him for Christmas, birthday, anniversary, all of those combined, I would like the full set of Chalgu interchangeable needles. And he was just like, okay, shrugged it off, didn't know what we were on about. He, he knows some things when it comes to knitting, he doesn't know other things. So he, being the absolute darling, um, purchased me my set. So we were both cooked up sick and it was coming up for... So we've got a lot happening the first part of the year. So we've now got, we don't really celebrate it, but we remember it. We've got the day that we got engaged. And then we have, after that, we have the anniversary of us moving in together. That was on the 7th of March. Today is the 12th. So we've just literally celebrated that. And then on the 13th of March, it is our actual anniversary. So we have a lot happening within the first three months. And then it's my birthday in April. And then it's his birthday in June. So busy six months. And so as somewhat of a combined gift, don't ask me which ones is combined, he got my needles and I'm over the moon. He's getting wrestling DVDs, so in my eyes, not exactly equal. I'm all about trying to keep it equal. Like if I spend a certain, if he spends a certain amount, I kind of want to try and match it. But that goes into relationship politics, and I'm not willing to fight with people about that one. You do you, we'll do us. So I got my Chiaogu needle set from Katie of Sealy Make Wheelie. We went to her website specifically. I wanted to support my friend. And I am over the moon. I've already used them. I cast on my Summer Court tank with the 3.75 from here. And then I moved down to the 3.5 and then the 3.25. And I didn't realise that Chiaogu don't do a 3 because it's in the US sizes, so it goes US 2 is 2.75, US 3 is 3.25, so there isn't a 3. So I'm going to have to do some research to see if I can get a singular 3 mil set and then just slot them in here because there's, there's like some more pockets here. It's the same with, what else did I see? There's no seven. There's no seven and I, do we get a 7.5? Is that a thing? There's definitely no seven. I don't know if you get a 7.5 milliliter, milli, milliliter needle. No, our needles are not in milliliters. I don't know if you get 7.5 millimeter. I genuinely don't know, but I know you get a seven. And there isn't a seven. So I need to do some research and see if I can get a singular set of three and a singular set of seven and just pop them in. And I am specifically putting my needles back when I'm finished.
because I am sick of my not putting them back and not being able to find a certain needle size. I know for a fact out of I have basically two and a two and a half sets of needles. What should be two full sets and then kind of like hand me downs. I know at least one size from one of my full sets snapped. Don't remember which size. I didn't take a note of it. Actually, I think I put a photo up on my Instagram. I should be able to go back and find that. But yeah, I'm sick of the fact that I can't find half my needles. So I'm being really, really good and I'm putting them back after I've used them. Let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> okay, uh, well, also because Katie is such a darling, um, she sent me a Zodiac pin. I was unfortunately unable to support the yarn Kickstarter that she had. Well, it was not just yarn, it was yarn and fibre. But I was unable to support the Kickstarter that she had for the Zodiac theme. Um, but I am extremely thankful that she sent me a pin because it is just such a gorgeous pin. Like, look at that sparkle. So yeah, check out Celie McWheelie. I will link the website down below. And if you are in the local vicinity, you can go to the, the physical shop as well. I've yet to get along because I think, I think opening weekend was the weekend Scott tested positive. And then obviously we've been in isolation since. So I have physically have not been, uh, been able to get to the shop. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. <coughs> okay. One more drink. I'm nearly finished my tea. Okay, I'm finished my tea. Right. Let's not. Yep, nearly dropped something. Okay, so. Crinkle, crinkle. I was paying up an order from Jo who was having a de-stash and she was de-stashing this absolutely gorgeous yarn from Bear and Sheep's Clothing and this is Bear Cozy. It is 400 meters per 100 grams and it is 100% fine Falkland Merino. And it is gorgeous. It is so soft and squishy and there's little bits of neon and there's some like a beautiful kind of um mm, I don't want to say like well it is patches of purple. Uh, there's one cake tap where you can see like the purple a wee bit more clearer throughout. Like just hints of it, like I think it's going to knit up really really well if you do helical knitting. And there's just little pops of neon, which we all know I love. And so there's black, there's neon greeny yellow, there's purple, there's blue. Um, wee bit of red, but I think that's just the purple has kind of lost its saturation. Like this bit in here is kind of like the most saturated. It's just such a gorgeous colour and it's not something like I've I've seen before. So I'm really really thankful for Jo for having this de-stash because I probably would never have seen this yarn. And um, it's going to be a sweater. It is a sweater's quantity and that is why I bought it. I'm now deliberately going out my way to buy sweater's quantities instead of just single skeins. That doesn't mean I'm never going to buy a single skein again because I have two right here to show you. But um, this is now my third set's sweater's quantity this year. 
a 2 on D stash, 1 on a super sale because unfortunately they were closing down. So yeah. Okay. The swears quantity that I just showed I technically bought last month but I was paying it up over two months so that's not really a new purchase but I did treat myself when I was sick. One of them isn't yarn related so I'm gonna show them off regardless because I think they're fucking amazing. <laughs> I have big feet. I have big big feet. I have a UK size 9 and that definitely used to be a lot harder to shop for. Like buying shoes for me when I was younger was a nightmare. I hated shoe shopping. Hated it with an absolute passion because I could never find the shoes I wanted as a kid. All the cute shoes everyone else was wearing, all the fun shoes didn't fit me. They didn't fit a girl. And when I got older, they started doing bigger sizes. So I was on, literally have it right here. I was on Instagram and I follow somebody who basically shows off incredible shoes. Are they going to come up? real easy if I just scroll a little bit because they normally post a real like every other day every day uh, but yep they post about shoes all the time that is literally what their account is uh, I think irregular thinking is the person's Instagram and uh, I didn't realise they were based in Scotland. I certainly didn't realise that they work in a shoe shop. She, she, her, that's her pronouns. And so I seen a page, I seen one of her reels and she had tagged a shoe shop and it's called Lottie's Attic. And little did I know that they have a showroom in Edinburgh. And so I went on, not really having high hopes that they would have anything in my size. And specifically not having high hopes that if they did have them in my size, like a UK 9, that they weren't quite going to fit. A lot of the time when you get a UK 9, it's like actually about an 8.5, so it's just a bit too tight. And so I was having a nosy and I love a good sale. Like if you send me something for a really good sale, there's a high chance I'm gonna buy something just because it's on sale. I know, horrible mentality to have. It bites me in the arse every time. Uh, and it bit me on the arse this time and I am in love. It was worth it. Look at my shoes! So yes, that is gold and red glitter. Or red. Well, it's not sequins. I was going to say sequins. Look at these. How freaking amazing. It's like Iron Man for Broadway. I haven't worn them out yet. I fully plan to. Um, and I'm just like... These were £80 off. They cost me 40 quid. And I'm doing it in Klarna. Is that how you say it? Clear pay, Klarna? Not Klarna, Clear pay. Uh, where I pay a tenner every week. Is that right? Every two weeks? I don't know. <sighs> They're just so pretty. And they fit. They actually fit. Uh, I bought my wedding shoes. Um, because they're high heels, uh, they're not comfortable. They're not uncomfortable. For heels, they're not uncomfortable. Um, but they're way more comfortable. They're not wedding shoes, by the way. Okay. 
back to the yarny things. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I was watching the lovely Nancy of Kitty Scraper Knits, who has a podcast. I will link it down below. I've also talked about her before and shared the link, so I hope you've all gone and followed her. Subscribed, sorry, wrong thing. And she was talking about Jibby Roo Sews. And I have heard of Jibby Roo Sews before, the bag maker, and assumed, on my part and wrongly, that they were based in the States. I don't know why most good bag makers are, in my opinion, apart from uh, Ellen, who is Calic Chick Ellen. Um, most bag makers that I really like are based in the States. And because of that, I don't normally look at their stuff because normally I always get hit with customs and import charges and all that jazz. And so when Nancy was talking about them, I was just like, right, do you know what? I'm just going to go check them out and see because some of their stuff looks really, really interesting. Lo and behold, they're based in the UK. Fantastic. I bought two bags. <laughs> So one is slightly bigger and it has Grogu on it and it says Gimme Gimme with a ton of candy which is just really really fitting and it's just nice and basic on the inside. No overly complicated stuff, no pockets that I'm gonna get my finger caught in or anything, just nice and plain and simple with a gorgeous neon zip which I am loving. And then the other one is narrower and just a tiny bit taller. Nope, take that back, exactly the same height but definitely narrower. And again, nice and plain on the inside, just their tag which is down the side. And uh, it is, they're both very small box bottoms but still a box bottom and I think this would be fantastic for socks or a shawl, like a long narrow shawl um, or the start of a sweater if you're not carrying all the yarn but yeah definitely good for smaller projects this one maybe could get a sweater for me in it but yeah I just had to get them both of them are the Mandalorian both of them have Okay, I don't know where it cut off, but I just had to because they're both the Mandalorian. And look, how could you say no? Such a cute little face. Why does my phone keep buzzing? Oh, it's Zoe! Remember I just talked about her in our podcast, You So You? She's literally just replied to something in my stories. <laughs> um, hi Zoe <laughs> but yeah uh, one of my favourite okay I have two favourite self striper dyers one of them is Marcus which is fibre punk and the other one is laughing yaffle you've heard me talk about them before you have seen their yarn before uh, they had an update I had three in my cart, I put one back because I was just like, okay, right this second, can't justify spending 50 quid on yarn, could justify 32. So, these are both 12 stripe colours, like 12 stripe um, yarns, I don't know, words, brain fog's really kicking in right now. So this one is Hidden Treasure and this one is Carousel. So this one's nice and bright and very very summery whereas this one's got a kind of a darker more autumnal feel to it for me. And I just think they're both absolutely gorgeous. They are both 80% Superwash Blue Face Lester, 20% Nylon and approximately 400 meters. And I just think they're absolutely stunning. So yeah, that was the last of my spending spree. 
minus a couple of new crystals. But yeah. I'm getting a little bit breathless. Um, I may have to take my inhaler. I'm also realising I should probably eat some lunch. But I guess we'll just do a wee bit of blather. Today was my freedom day. Um, I'm calling it my freedom day because I was officially allowed to leave the house. Uh, it was the end of my isolation period so I did jump into town today. There was a farmer's market and I was able to support three small independent businesses uh, with my purchases. Businesses, purchases, that's a little S's. Sorry, I just need a couple of seconds to breathe. It's not like I'm sitting and crumpling my chest, it's very weird. So yeah, Scott's been on night shift the last three days. He started night shift on Wednesday and then Thursday and then Friday. And I genuinely thought he was going to come straight to bed today. And um, I normally hear our front door opening, uh, but I think I must have slept through it. Otherwise he didn't get in until the minute I woke up because something woke me up. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to go back to bed. It's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go back to bed. And then something made me look at my phone and I was like, no, it's quarter to nine. So I just got up and showered and then came down, spoke to Scott. And I was like, oh, this is my plans for the day. And he's just like, oh, uh, can I come? And I was like, sure. So we just went into Paisley Town Centre. We went to the farmer's market. I jumped into a pharmacist to ask a question about a medication that I've been on. Because uh, I don't think it works anymore, and she agrees. Turns out I was I've been using a steroid nasal spray, and she reckons my body has just stopped reacting to it. So I need to get on the phone to my doctor. And then we hit a couple more shops, done a little bit of food shopping to like stock up the freezer, and then we came home. Scott officially went to bed. He should have gone to bed like at nine. Because he needs to get back on track because um, he goes back to normal day shift on Monday. Uh, so he was meant to like go to bed at 9 and wake up about 1 and then try and stay awake without napping and then go to bed at like a normal time like half 10, 11 and then it kind of threw us out of sync that he ended up coming out with me and we didn't get back till 12. So reckon I'm giving him till at least 4 o'clock before I wake him up. Um, and it's 10 to 3 just now. So giving him till about 4 o'clock and then he's going to get his butt out of bed. And then we're having meatball taco nachos for dinner. <laughs> Don't ask. I am just in a nacho serious kick right now. Constantly either having like taco mince nachos, chicken nachos. So tonight we're having Taco meatball nachos. <laughs> uh, I'm. No, I'm going to change how I started that. We, Scott and I, went to the Scottish wedding show and we reckon we are on track to get a couple of things booked. We're going to contact the photographer that we really, really enjoyed from the event from the day. Uh, we didn't, we haven't done it before now because we were both sick and uh, not to be too morbid but we wanted to make sure we were going to survive before paying a deposit. <laughs> um, and we think we're, we know which band we're going to book but we need to contact the hotel where we're having our ceremony and the general wedding to make sure there's no restrictions when it comes to live music because I don't remember what they told us on the day that we viewed and booked the venue. Um, so, photographer, band, Scott has picked roughly the colour of kilt he wants so I can finally start really narrowing down the colour scheme because that was, that was holding up a lot for me because you can't really pick a kilt colour 
online because they might not have calibrated everything so it might not come up true and then we definitely don't have our screens calibrated so what we are seeing might not be the colour so we really wanted to see something in person uh, so that's been really really good that we've been able to make that I have recently really become obsessed with wax melts uh, we actually um, at the wedding show came across a small business that done candles that you could personalise for your wedding and they also done wax melts and I was like oh are you selling those today and she's like yes yes we are and I was like can I have these ones um, and unfortunately over the last week and a bit I did lose my sense of smell and taste and I wasn't able to smell my favourite wax melt from them uh, but if anyone's curious it's Mia May. They are on Instagram. I will tag them down below. And uh, my favourite one, absolute favourite one, which I need to order more of, is the Black Plum and Rhubarb. So I need to get back onto them and see if they're either doing... Um, like a farmer's market. I know they were at Loch Lomond last weekend but we weren't allowed to leave the house last weekend. Uh, so I need to see next time they're doing like a farmer's market or something and get along and purchase more or see if they've, if I can order from their website. I was on their website and I couldn't see their wax melts. So I need to contact them and see. But yeah. Um, wedding talk purchases <coughs> uh. oh if anyone's got any like recommendations for some podcasters I can watch or listen to like audio ones uh, then pop them in the comments below because I was going through a phase where I just couldn't find because I watch like a lot of the same people every time I'm like right podcast more like I need another episode um so if anyone wants to drop any recommendations down below oh so we only did post it six hours ago that's why I've not seen it okay that makes a lot more sense but yeah um my recommendations for podcasts this week who have I really enjoyed this week Let's see what I've been watching. Um, where's my watched videos? Library. Oh yeah, there's something else I want to talk about. So I've been watching uh, The Passionate Spinner, who I love. I think they're brilliant. Um, Susan of Knitlip. Sometimes YouTube is a pain in the arse to use. Nanya of The Knitting Therapist. Uh, Jude of Stranded. Um, 5th of March. Well, obviously Deborah of Diary of a Phys Physicist. Deborah, change your name, I can't say it. <laughs> <coughs> Diary of a Physicist Farm gal. Why is that so hard for me to say? Teresa of 33rd Street Knits. Uh, the Knit Girls. The Midnight Diary. Um, yeah, those are like my usuals. And then we've obviously talked about Nancy and Zoe's. So yeah, anyway. Just comment what podcast you watch down below and I might see if there's anything new that I don't watch uh, and give them a try because I'm in a bit of a slump for what I'm watching at the moment. I've been watching a lot of documentaries, I've started listening to My Favourite Murder which is really really interesting. Uh, I'm running out of murder documentaries to watch on Netflix believe it or not. <laughs> I. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna edit this because I don't want to edit it tomorrow. Tomorrow is Scott and I's sixth year anniversary. God, I should know that. I'm not good with dates. I have no sense of time. Like, time passing, I have no sense of time. Pretty sure it's six years. I really should know that. But yeah, it's our anniversary tomorrow. So I'm gonna try and get this recorded before he wakes up so that we can just spend the rest of the day together. Uh, reckon I'm, I need to drop something off at my parents' house tomorrow and then I think we might go a drive if the weather's nice. Um, and I've got some tidying up to do now that I keep throwing everything on that couch. <laughs> but I hope you're having a good day, week, weekend, month. Year starting out a bit shit. Oh, there was other things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> ah, brain fog is real, guys. Dustlin sweater by West Knits. I purchased it yesterday. I love that sweater. I think it's brilliant. Uh, and I want to know if anyone else wants to cast it on. And we can do a bit of a knit along. Or we can have like a cast on party on Zoom or something. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below if you want to take part in that. I'll also post it on my Instagram, which is grenade underscore creations. Funny thing, if you put the closed captions on, they think grenade is granny. So this is the granny creations podcast according to YouTube's closed captions. Uh, my partner, I don't know why I said it that way, you all know his name. Scott sent me like uh, a message saying, you know YouTube's saying that you you have the Granny Creations podcast. I was like, what are you on about? And then I watched it and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> so, Granaic, it can't, because it's Gaelic, it's not really picking it up. Anyway, if you want to do the Dustland sweater knit along, or actually really just any of the Dustland, because they've got the shawl, the mittens, the hat. I'm sure there's more. There's a lot. He's brought out a lot for the Dustland. Yeah, if you want to do any of the Dustland stuff, it doesn't have to be the sweater, then, excuse me, let me know and we can do like a knit along for it. Uh, that would be really fun. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it. There's a lot of shit going on in the world. Normally I don't try and put this up in my podcast, but I feel like I have to say my part and kind of like make my stance. There's a lot of shit going on in the world at the moment. I My heart breaks for Ukraine. It really does. It breaks for Ukraine. Um, it's a bad time to watch pigeons chasing each other on a balcony. I'm going to stop watching them because it's funny. My heart breaks for Ukraine. I have a lot of anger towards Texas and Florida. Um, the don't say gay bill is fucking stupid. If you support that bill in any form, fuck off. I said it. I stand by it. I don't want people in my space that support that bill. The horrible bill, or whatever you guys call it in Texas, where parents of transgender children are going to be charged with child abuse because they are trying to help their children become the person that they are meant to be. If you support that, fuck off. I think everyone deserves to be the person that they are, regardless of how they were assigned at birth, regardless of what religion they do or do not follow, what colour their skin is. The only thing I have a problem with is if you are homophobic, racist, um, and generally a really nasty ass person. There's a lot of other words, a lot of big words that I 
don't know how to say. Uh, like xenophobic. Um, but yeah, be a nice person. Don't be a dick. Don't support these bills or laws, whatever they're called. Like they're, I think there are bills in America. I think. Um, but yeah, if you support those, I don't want you here. I don't even care if you don't really say anything in the comments. I just don't support that crap. I think it's really, really wrong. It's really damaging. You are purposefully excluding people and making them feel like they are not good enough and that they will never be good enough in your eyes. This whole don't say gay bill is fucking stupid. There is no reasonable logic behind it. Um, and trying to charge parents with child abuse because they are supporting their trans child is outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. Um, so if you support either of those bills or if you are pro-Russia, fuck off. Simple as. I have been feeling very off the last couple of days whilst I've been processing the war that Russia have caused and the devastation in Ukraine. And I have been struggling to process how backwards some things in America are. And it has had a great toll on my physical and emotional health. And I, I don't live in those countries. But there is stuff you can do. There are uh, petitions that you can sign for the bills in America. Even if you don't live in America. I signed petitions the other day. And uh, it, as long as you can provide like uh, your postcode and stuff like that. Even if you're in Scotland, it still accepts it. <coughs> and then you can support Ukraine by sending donations, monetary donations. I do recommend that I think some people are really trying to think with their heart by saying go to Etsy and buy digital files from people in Ukraine. But in my day to day job I know for a fact that there's at least two banks in Ukraine that are hit by sanctions right now. And monetary transactions are extremely difficult. So you're doing a good thing by supporting them, yes. But are they actually able to get that money? Is it helping them? So send donations to the likes of the Red Cross and other aids. There are a lot of links out there that you can use. And even if you can't donate, I can't donate. I don't have the money to donate. Yes, I've bought all that stuff. But I can't donate right now. You don't know my financial situation. I don't need to explain that. But I can support and try and help in other ways. So just think about your actions before you do them. Because a lot of people haven't realised that there's actually some banks in Ukraine that are being sanctioned. It's not just Russia. So ending it on a very heavy note. Apologies, but not sorry at the same time. I so was like, please don't let that horn go on longer than it has to. Don't even know if you heard it. But yeah, ending it on a bit of a heavy note. Apologies for that, but not sorry at the same time. Um, I just had to kind of get that off my chest. But yeah, I'm going to edit this and get it up on YouTube. I'm going to finish watching Life After Death with T T Tyler Henry. Uh, it's about, I don't know if you've heard of him. I hadn't heard of him until this. He is a medium. I believe in mediumship and all of that. I am pagan or Wiccan, whichever you want to call it. I have crystals, I have tarot cards, I have all of that. So I am a big believer. So I'm watching that 
which is really, really interesting. I think I only have three episodes left. And then I have to find something <laughs> some whole new to watch. Which is always my issue, is trying to find something new to watch. But yeah, I'm going to edit my podcast. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to try and tidy up all that broken glass. It really needs done. It really sucks that literally every level in that um, trolley has yarn in it, so it might have pieces of glass in it. So I just need to grab the hoover and make sure I'm being really, really, really careful. But yeah, I hope you're having a really good weekend. Uh, like I say, it's Scott and I's anniversary tomorrow, so we're probably just going to have a nice lazy day together. Um, then I go back to work Monday. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just really looking forward to the warmer weather, the nice sunshine, uh, get out, top up my freckles. I don't tan, I burn, and then I go back to white. But I top up freckles. Wear your sunscreen. I put mine on first thing this morning. Uh, yeah, if I look really red today, it's because my skin has completely broken out. Mm, it was really sore this morning. I don't know what's going on. I think it's just stress and getting over COVID. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, probably be another two weeks till I record. I feel like that's the nice sweet spot. A week's not enough time to do a lot of progress. Two weeks is a good amount of time. Three, once we get to three or four weeks, I'm just kind of like, eh. It's been so long. I don't know how to record anymore. <laughs> so yeah, two weeks seems to be the good sweet spot for me. Um, so yeah, see you then. Stay safe. Take care.